Amen, amen, amen. Welcome everybody to Raccoon Valley Church of God. Find your neighbor there and give them a high five. Let them know you're still glad to see them. You've been seeing them all day. And uh, hey, I'm so glad you chose to be here on an 83 degree night. The house of the Lord, amen. Um, Hey, if you feel comfortable, if everybody wants to move a little bit closer, feel free to. Come on, Lawrence, you don't got to sit all the way back here. Move up just a little bit, and let's just kind of combine over here. We're family, and uh, we're going to have a good time tonight in the Lord. Uh, how many knows that uh, God is was in this place this morning? Amen. If God spoke to you in the house this morning, let's just give him praise. Amen. So, are we live yet? We are live? Okay. You're alive. We're al- who else is alive? We're alive. Hey, any time that, once again, you know this, this isn't, you know, new news to anyone. Y'all know we just came out of revival services. We should still be in revival, right? Any time that you go through that and your first message as the pastor of the church that hosts the revival is the anointing of the Holy Ghost... I'll say it like T.D. Jakes did. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen? So this week, I'm calling for everyone next week to pick one day, and I want you to fast the entire day. And this is, if the enemy wants to come at us, we're going to go at the enemy. Take back what he stole. I'm going to choose, personally, I'm going to choose Wednesday night just because that's our day, one of our days of worship. And if you want to join me, hey, let's kick the devil's butt. I like to say that all the time. Let's kick the devil's butt together. It's time to come in together, fast and pray. The time is running short. I feel it more and more every single day that our time on this earth is very, very short. Um, Look around this room. We've got the faithful crowd here tonight. So... You know what that means? God's going to do something awesome in this place. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, in your holy name, we just come together tonight. And Lord, we ask that you would move in this house. We ask, God, that you would breathe on us once again, God. Lord, we come together and we cancel that assignment of the enemy by the power that you've given us, by the words of our lips. God, we pray for freedom and liberty in this church tonight. In Jesus' name mighty name. Lord, as we praise and worship you, God, I pray that you would scramble the the plans of the enemy, Lord, that as we are here tonight, Lord Jesus, that you would manifest your powerful presence in this place. God, we invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you in this house tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. If you're ready to worship, I want you to stand on your feet and give God the best praise that you have all evening. Come on, put your hands together for King Jesus. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my
my sin was deep Your grace was deeper My shame was wide Your arms were wider My guilt was great Your love was greater still My sin was deep your grace was deeper, my shame was wide, your arms were wider, my guilt was great, your love was greater still. You know, I am, um, <clears throat> for months, I kept getting the same message from the enemy that my ministry was dead before it even began. And he inflicted so much shame and, and grief upon me and disappointment and I felt so worthless in the eyes of the Father. And I would get this reoccurring nightmare of being trapped in a prison cell and being told that was where I belonged. And it wasn't until one night when I prayed to God and in that dream, when I was locked in that prison cell, I heard a strong voice say, you're mine. And the gate of that prison door opened wide. And he said, my, my, my sin was deep, but his love was greater. And my shame was wide, but his arms are wider. <laughs> Let's sing that again. My sin was deep. Your grace was deeper, my shame was wide, your arms were wider, my guilt was great, your love was greater still. My sin was deep, your grace was deeper, my shame was wide, your arms were wider, my guilt was great, your love was greater still. How deep, how wide, how far.
for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, my soul, don't you get shot on me, lift up your song. church is more than enough for him and this small crowd throwing their hands in worship even without a guitar that's more than enough for him (laughs) the creator of this whole universe looks at you and says you are more than enough let's sing that one more time before we end worship so i throw up my hands praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much I'm nothing else before a king except for a heart singing church because all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Can you praise him tonight? Right where you are. Amen. Come on. Somebody just say he's worthy. Amen. He's worthy. There's some of y'all, the faith, the amount of faith that you carry, Pam, Pam, there's going to be a day where uh, you won't have to ask God the questions like why you'll just get to say thank you lord hallelujah thank you for my babies thank you for my grandbabies
Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Man, we were talking about this earlier, and um, I promise I'm going to preach this word, Marina, but the, the, Satan used to be Lucifer, right? Used to be the praise and worship leader in heaven. So have you ever like been in a worship service when it feels like, okay, come here, Tony. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to I'm trying to just worship. I want you to just keep my arm down, okay, at all costs. Just, man, you're getting you're stronger than you used to be. <laughs> Lord, Lord, he said I'm fatter. Lord, I just you know uh, the reason why you feel exhausted. I don't know if it's just me, but when I get done worshiping the Lord, I feel exhausted because there's a spiritual battle going on behind the scenes and then we get refreshed by the watering of the word isn't that awesome well, it's like God's word after we come out of battle during worship and then he washes us with his word as we put on our armor right and so I just wanted to remind you hey if you're here tonight and it's hard to say hallelujah it's hard to say it, it for you guys, it ain't that hard because it's Sunday night, 80 degrees outside, and you showed up to the house of the Lord. And if the rapture happened right now, a lot of people would be ashamed of themselves. I'm just going to say it. I should have went to church. My Lord, COVID's over. The doors are open. But, and Junior, you know what I'm talking about, being in ministry as long as you have. Every time we say that word, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's like when you buy a car, right? It used to belong to me. Kathy buys it from me for $40,000. I'll take the check after church, all right? And then uh, I sign it over, and then now it says you as the owner. Well, he got, Lucifer got demoted, and you got promoted into that place of worship. So now as heirs to the throne, sons and daughters of God, every time you throw up your hands and praise him again and again, it's just like it's just like putting a stink on the devil's face. And I love it every single time. Amen. Come on, just go like that. Say, not today, Satan. Cause because I'm gonna throw sin. Because I'm gonna throw up my hands. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a If you're glad that you're able to worship tonight in the face of our God, but also the face of the enemy, just put your hands together and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go before the Lord in our giving tonight. Uh, Micah, if you'll pick up, looks like we've got some debit cards right there in the floor. Don't put those in there. Leland's tucked my debit cards out of my wallet trying to give it all. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you again for being here tonight. Um, if you want to give, uh, feel free. If you can't, that's okay. We're going to pray that God will continue to bless you um, every in area, every area of your life. Um, man, it's so good just to be in God's house again tonight. Although there are some familiar faces that I have missed being with them all week in revival, I just want to just take a moment and thank our praise team for all the, the hard work that you guys have done. Um, Jordan and Pierce came out last night to meet me here at 9.30 p.m. 
and we clean this entire church because Elliot and Lauren are on vacation. Let's just give it up for the McGugans for always being there and doing an awesome job, the work of the Lord, and then the Rodriguez family driving an hour every time they're here. They were almost every every service, right, for revival. Friday uh, for anointed, and then two Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Um, thank you so much. We're just so blessed. Amen. We're so blessed. Uh, those of you that didn't uh, weren't here for the last night of revival, um, the Lord did an awesome work in Tiffany's life over here. Just shocked her, floored her. She didn't realize that God was going to bless her and, and Zach for a future trip to Israel, but they're going back. Amen. Whether they like it or not, they're going. <laughs> anyway we're so excited about what God's doing and it's all because of your generosity and we just thank you uh, for that Father we thank you for this opportunity of giving tonight we ask Lord that you breathe on it bless it have your way in this place in Jesus name and everyone said amen amen thank you ushers thank you ushers thank you ushers amen if you got your Bibles I want you to turn to Isaiah 43 18 through 19 if you will I'm going to do my best to get through this uh, message as quickly as I can so you can uh, apply it to your life and go about your day, get rested up for the rest of the week. Let's be honest. Anybody in here, you're just flat out tired. Raise your hand. You are tired in your body. You're tired in your spirit. Lynn's not. She's like, nope, I'm refreshed and praise God. Amen. She's been eating them fresh eggs. She's ready to go. She's ready to go. Uh, if you want some fresh eggs, she's selling them for about $5,000 a dozen, so just get up with her. And uh, if you pay her $5,000 for a dozen, that's a dozen for life, anytime you want it, amen? So anyway, uh, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, y'all just got to learn how to laugh even if it's not funny or I won't stop, all right? I won't stop. Ask my wife, she'll tell you, amen? But anyway, um, I just, I don't you know, give her enough uh, gratitude or thank yous from up here because, number one, she doesn't like it, but uh, she she does her best, and she is an awesome mama. She's raising our beautiful kids uh, in a wonderful way. My kids praise the Lord. I don't care how young they are. They praise Jesus, amen? And so I was just telling a, a young couple the other day, I said, hey, if your babies are in church, if they scream, if they cry, if they poop, if they throw food, if they slobber, if they throw up, it does not matter to me. They're in God's house, amen? Uh, we can get past the screaming and the poop and all that stuff, but um, the one thing that you can't do for a child uh, the one thing that you can't do after they grow up and pass away, if they go to a place called hell, you can't pull them out of hell. But what you can do when they're young is teach them in the way that they should go. And the Bible says when they're old, they'll never depart from it. So praise God, Pierce, when you get older. You're, uh, hopefully you've had six months to work on that sermon you told me about. Uh, whenever you're ready to preach it, let's go, all right? Uh, when he's old, he's going to be serving the Lord. When my babies are old, they're going to be serving the Lord, amen? And some of y'all, you're still waiting on that to happen. Well, it's going to happen because God's word never returns void, amen? Never returns void, but here's, here's a question I want to ask you tonight. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to change? And Stephen said, are you willing to change your background on this graphic? And I said, no, I kind of like it. I used it this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it again. Glory to God, all right? But are you willing to change? That is a question that has, uh, let me get real tonight because, you know, let's be honest. It's nice outside. I'm sure the state office isn't going to watch this message, but anytime you talk about change, um, it will shake about nine out of ten church of gods. I thank God, I don't know how it was, Brother Jack, but I thank God I wasn't the pastor when the announcement was made that the pews were going to be ripped up and the red carpet was going to be tore off the floor. I'm so glad that I was not the pastor whenever the little nameplate on the side of the pew that was from your great, 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 great grandmother of Moses' aunt's cousin down the street uh, donated that pew or raised money for that that pew that uh, you had to let the family know that you were removing that pew and sometimes it is hard to accept change amen uh, I remember coming here my wife and I we were scared
Hello. There we are. Uh, and I was scared to death. Uh, we got more batteries, devil. You just came to the wrong place. And uh, we... Uh, we were scared to death, and I was looking around, and, and one of the things I said to my wife was, what if they don't want change? And uh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. And uh, Kathy's giggling over here. We'll tell the whole story if you want to ask us that. No, I'm just kidding. But um, sometimes change is hard, amen? Sometimes it's rough. Uh, here, lately, uh, here lately, we've been seeing a lot of change in our United States of America. We've been seeing a lot of change in, uh, uh, let, me, let me preach to my brother uh, over here, Brother Junior. We've been seeing a lot of change in the sports industry. Industry. Uh, half of our Tennessee team are going into the transfer portal because something called the NIL has happened and shown up, and they get like two, three, four million dollar deals just to trade teams all the time, and there's no commitment. It's all about personal gain now. And so there is change taking place, good change, there's bad change, but then there is change in our church, right? There's change. I'm going to get a little personal here. And uh, there's there's no uh, there's no reason for you to clog your ears. Those of you who don't go here full time, that's okay. You can listen to because there's change happening in your church. But there is change that is happening in the church. I talked about it briefly this morning, and unfortunately. As Pastor Martina has so kindly reminded me that when you take a stand for the truth and the word of God, then things begin to change. There are people that walk out of your life that were never intended to be in your life, or maybe they were just worshiping imitation Jesus when you were pursuing the real one. And so when you get up on your feet and you say, we're going to change, but it's because we are in the wrong direction, then a lot of things begin to happen. And people walk away from your life. And let me tell you, those people can even share the same DNA that runs in your veins. And that's when it becomes hard. But are you willing to change? If Jesus walked into this room and said, Kathy, change this now. Pam, change this now. Jack, change, 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 change. Would you be willing to change? What if Jesus walked in Tiffany and said, full-time missionary in the name of Jesus, would you be willing to change? It's a hard one, right? It's a hard one. And that's not a prophecy, all right? Don't pass out or anything. Are you willing to change? Now, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Are we willing to change? Are we make, willing to make a change in our church? And I'm not talking about ripping up the carpet again, all right? What if I was to come here next week, Kathy, and say, all right, we're pulling up all the carpet, we're pulling up all the chairs, and we're putting back the pews, and we're putting back the red carpet, all right? Would anybody be shouting for No, nobody's going to shout. It doesn't make sense, right, to go backwards, but when God changes things, it's for the good. But sometimes it's painful. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. As I began to think about this verse tonight, I'm here to tell you, uh, when I was thinking about it, the question came to mind, are we willing to change? Are we willing to go forward? In our scripture, the writer was speaking about how Israel had been in the wilderness between the Red Sea and the land of Canaan and was guided and supplied with water by Jehovah. Jehovah Rapha himself our provider. But the new deliverance that he prophesied here shall be uh, attended with manifestations of God's power and love eclipsing the old. There's that word again, eclipsing, all right? Change sometimes involves God stepping in front of the thing that you're pursuing saying, no, 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 not another step until I say go forward. He said, I will open a way not merely in the Red Sea but in the wilderness of the whole world and not merely one river shall gush out of the rock, but many which shall refresh, not the bodies as formerly, but the souls of the thirsty, so that the prophecy shall be fulfilled with joy. Shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation? Now, listen to this God said he would make a way in the wilderness. The words a way 
often stands for the true religion uh, in Acts 9 and 2, 18 and 26. The word river expresses the influence of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it awesome how we always talk about the washing of the water of the word? Usually water is associated with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit brings something that washes away. It makes you new. You get out of the shower, you don't smell like the old you. You smell like the new you, all right? Like the Axe commercial or the Old Spice, but we're not going to get into there, all right? We're not going to get into that. Um, we're not going to talk about the sweet taste of Diet Dr. Pepper. Uh, we're not going to get in those commercials, but all you need to do is get in that word and realize that when God's ready to wash you, he'll put you in the spin cycle, Zach, and he will wash you until you get a new vision and a new direction. But in order to get there, sometimes you've got to change. Sometimes he's got to make a way in the wilderness. You know, when you make a new path, it's messy, Right? Uh, if y'all look in the parking lot in the corner right here, every year the mud just piles up about this tall for whatever reason, and then it all just builds up right there, and then the water floods the parking lot, and, and you know, so on and so forth. And so our neighbors who are, are just awesome, and I love them so much, came down here and, and scraped all that out of here and made a new path for the water to go. Well, when they did that, they took off the surface of the soil and left nothing but the bare dirt. And so when it rains, it made a nasty mess. It was a new path, but sometimes when God makes a new way in your life, and any time, let me just go ahead and say this as, a, as, as someone who is maturing as a pastor, but mature enough and has the guts enough to say this, when God tells you I'm going to do something new, that doesn't mean leave your church. When God says, I'm about to do something new in your life, you don't say, well, God's getting ready to move me out of here. No. God can do something new where you are. And you, he can use you where you are planted. Anywhere that you plant a seed, it will bloom, it will grow. Bloom where you are planted until God uproots you, makes it obvious, and then sends you on the way. The enemy loves to use that and say, hey, God's going to do something new. That means you better pack your bags because he's always trying to sow discord. Can I just get a little more personal, Sister Kathy? I'm tired of hearing, have you seen such and such? I heard such and such is at another church. I heard such and such is going here and such and such. Let them go. It does not matter what they've decided to do. We have got work to do, body of Christ. Unfortunately, when some people move, when things happen, it's hard to change because we've gotten so used to a certain thing. It is hard for me to drive down past the 1-9 and go to Norris Freeway. Does anybody know why? You live there? No, that's not why. That's funny, though. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Brother Ruben, can you throw me that rag right there? I'm a fat, sweaty Pentecostal preacher. And I'm not even preaching that hard, but I'm sweating. Um. I got used to driving down that road, hanging a right when you pass your house, go over the hill, go down, hang a right and go up the hill and see my papa. In that little cabin right here on Raccoon Valley is where I got down on one knee and I asked Micah to marry me. And her cousin took the footage of it before we ever moved in there. And we took communion right then and there, right after she said yes. Thank God she would have said yes. Or thank God she said yes. If she said no, I'd have chugged the whole bottle of grape juice from Kroger. Non-alcoholic, baby. But it was it's a special place, and I got used to calling him every day. And for the longest time, I had his voicemail on my computer. You've wretched Eddie. I was like, what in the world? How do you even spell that? You've wretched Eddie. <laughs> And I would listen to it and listen to it and listen to it. And the Lord said, you know what? You're going to have to let go. He's okay. He's with me. And there's some change coming. Because when I get in a catastrophe or an issue, I call him and he'd bail me out. Does anybody have those people in your life or you did have? You call them and they bail you out, right? Brother Jack, if I got in trouble tomorrow and I called you, I said, can you come get me out of jail? I whooped about four atheists on the side of the road. Would you come get me out? He said, yeah, no question right there. No, that ain't going to happen. I'll get them saved, amen. But, um, but anyway, 
uh, there's like a shift in your plans and something some things change and you don't have your person anymore. Uh, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. But anyway, when God makes a new way, it's hard to get used to that new path. Because you're used to going on the same path. When I go driving somewhere, or sometimes I'll just need to go drive and clear my mind, I'll go and drive the same path. I'll go down by Jordan's house, and I, I see both cars. I start rolling cold so he can hear me. That's me saying hi, all right? And then I'll go down Norris Freeway, go to Halls, and go through Halls around Fountain City, hit the highway, uh, stop over, you know, at at Target and, and get one of them little personal pizzas, uh, personal pan pizzas, and then... Don't tell Martina that I went shopping there so she won't get after me. And then I'll keep driving up the road. And uh, I'm telling you, anywhere you go besides God's chicken house is full of evil. you got to renounce the devil and go on in. Amen. Put your anointing oil all over them at ta- Taco Bell and just eat it, baby. But anyway, um, we, we get used to these patterns and we get used to these paths that we are on. Even in the workplace, we get used to a certain thing. And then more things get thrown at you and more things get thrown at you, more responsibility when they really realize that you can perform and then before you know your boss is calling you at three in the morning saying go turn this television off and go do this and go do that trust me I know that I've been there and it's happened to me but things begin to change and it shakes up our routine but here's what the Bible says here's what the Bible says Uh, the prophet had referred to the deliverance from Egypt and the passage through the Red Sea it was a new path but here he promises that the same power shall be employed in their redemption and return from the Babylon captivity God's power was wonderful and great with the Red Sea experience and the deliverance from the Egyptian uh, uh, tyranny of Pharaoh but wait till you see what God is going to do for you now God said remember Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Now, I don't believe God was telling them to completely forget about what God had done for them in the past. I remember when I got saved, and I will always thank God for that. I remember, I remember, I remember. I don't believe God's saying forget about everything that God's done for you. But I believe that he was telling them not to hold on to the things of the past for too long because if you hold on back here, how can you go like this, put your hands out in front of you like this, like you're about to catch something? How can you receive when you're holding on to something that is behind you? Amen? How can you receive something when the grip is so strong behind you and you can't let go? Some of y'all that know me very well, you're shaking your head. You're saying, you're preaching the house down, Pastor Zach, but you're, you're still holding on to some things too. I'm trying my best. I'm a growing right with you. Amen. I'm growing right with you. God said, don't consider the things of old. Don't be concerned too much about the things God did for you in the past. Be thankful and grateful. Hold, uh, hold it somewhere in your memory to remind you of God's power and faithfulness, but don't be concerned too much about it. Why would God tell him this? Because he said, I'm getting ready to do something new. And I need all your attention on what I'm going to do that's new. And thank God for what used to be and what used to happen. But I'm getting ready to pour out my spirit like you've never seen before. Says the Lord of hosts, I'm getting ready to shake the house of God. I'm getting ready to sift through the harvest. And I'm going to pull the wheat from the tares. I'm going to pull the wheat from the weeds. I'm going to send the weeds down the road. And I'm going to elevate those who are faithful in worshiping who I am. That's what I believe that the Holy Spirit it's saying today the word new was taken from the Hebrew word uh, 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 kaldash it means fresh or a new thing and I don't believe God wants us to hold on to the former things we must always cherish those past experiences I thank God when I first got in ministry for all those experiences but if I wouldn't have grown up it would have been a disaster right is anybody glad that you grew up a little bit if y'all's mamas would hear y'all's mamas would say amen preacher Tell them to grow up. Ashley was here. She'd be pointing at Pierce saying, amen, preacher. But God doesn't want us to live back there in the past. He doesn't want us to hold on to the former things. He wants us to leave those things in the history books that, and recall them from time to time and move forward in our experience with God. Today, earlier, Sister Cooper brought me up a photo. And she said, where's that photo? You got it right there, Miss Cooper, with the house? Give me that picture right there. Go back here and get it from her, Tony, if you can. <laughs> and uh, she brought me this photo, and it's a beautiful photo. And she was showing me all of her kids and, 
and the place where she lived and the big rocks that were there and Jordan was telling her how to find arrowheads and I don't know how he knows that might be North Carolina thing but um, and uh, this is yeah these are the two right here these are the two right here that I think and if you can see this this is two big rocks and then uh, uh, Sister Cooper right there in the middle of them two rocks it's like Pac-Man was about to eat her right there all right and then uh, <laughs> Rocky Pac-Man. And then this is a beautiful cabin. And there she is right there. And and uh, Joyce was sharing the testimony. She said, I was raising three kids in that place and I could barely see anything. And can I tell you that that's where the enemy wanted to keep her. Was that a place where she was discouraged and where she couldn't see and that this is the end of the road for you but God did something new and now she can see better than she's ever saw before and she's here today and she's not miserable she's serving the Lord in God's house and so anytime Sister Cooper when you think of this time you say thank the Lord that he brought me through but thank God that I'm not holding on to that what used to be I've claimed my healing in Jesus name I'm walking in victory in Jesus name thank God brother John Jordan, that, that when you said it's a miracle that you weren't in the jail being ministered to, but now you're ministering to those in the jail, thank God that you came out of that. Thank God, remember it, but thank God for what he did for your life and move on, baby. Somebody say amen. amen. But now God wants to do a new thing, Pastor Martina, a new thing. And a new thing requires change. If you get upset at this message, uh, it's your fault, okay, Pastor Martina? It's your fault for saying those things to me the past couple weeks. It's your fault. God wants to bring something fresh. He wants to bring something fresh. Now, if you're wondering why you see the same old faces doing the same old things, maybe some other people need to step up. <laughs> I'm not going to go. I can hear my wife and my spirit from the back saying, Move on. All right. But now God wants to do a new thing. He wants to bring something fresh and do uh, what uh, do that we must uh, to do that we must get rid of everything that is stale. Now, I love Lauren Tinsley. She is my friend. She's married to my best friend Elliot Tinsley, and uh, let me tell you when she cleans the church, if she finds something that she doesn't think needs to be here, she will throw it away. If it looks stale, if it spells stale, or if it even smells stale, she will throw it in the garbage. If you leave your hat here for more than two weeks and it becomes stale, it's going in the garbage, all right? She cleans house. She is a representative. She's preaching to us all the way from vacation saying, if it's stale, throw it out in the name of Jesus. Get rid of it. Don't let stale things remain in your life. God wants to bring something fresh, and he wants to get rid of what is stale. Uh, which of these would you rather have stale bread or fresh bread have you ever seen anybody go to Panera and be like yes can I get the special three loaves of stale bread I'm so excited Praise God. No, you want something fresh, right? You want something fresh. It reminds me of a uh, all of you who are in leadership in some sort of way. If you're in a leadership role somewhere, church, work, raise your hand. You're in a leadership role. It reminds me of a story of the starving baker. Let me tell you about the starving baker, Marina, because I feel like this is going to help you. For some reason, I'm just being obedient. It just comes out of my mouth. I flow. Uh, the starving baker, what happens is this baker knows how to cook. This baker prepares all the food. This baker does this. This baker does that and feeds the whole entire town, smells the beautiful, refreshing smell of all of that fresh bread. But the, the, the baker is starving because they don't have time to feed themselves. When you deal with a generation that does not want to change, you become like the starving baker. You bake the bread, you spoon feed them, you baby food feed them, and you're too tired to eat for yourself because they refuse to grow up. No wonder pastors are stopping. No wonder pastors are quitting. No wonder church doors are shutting down because we are trying to reach a generation that does not want to change. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> 
I'm not talking about change uh, uh, in, 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 in the fact of letting homosexuals become ministers or I'm not talking about the change of, of letting uh, gays and lesbians and addicts and stuff serve on your praise team. There's some bad changes that are happening. we got to still remain holy. But I'm talking about the change that needs to happen to make room for the presence of Jesus. There's some changes that are happening in churches that will never happen in a church that is full of the Holy Ghost. And I love those people, Pam Pam, I do so much. I have friends that I love who say that they are gay. And I'm not, I'm not claiming that. They're not gay. They're lost. They were born like I was born. They work like I work. They comb their hair like I comb my hair. Remember the song, red and yellow, black and white? They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves all of the little children of the world. And we are all little children in his eyes. And sometimes his children does stupid things. All the parents said amen. There are changes that are happening all around the world, but they're not going to happen in a spirit-filled environment. Are you willing to change? All right, let me move on. I'm getting a little off course here. Sometimes God likes a fresh start. At the time of the arrival of Jesus in Bethlehem, the church world had become stale and stagnant. I'm just, as I'm preaching this, Brother Jordan, I'm just, I'm hearing the voices of my colleagues in ministry. I've heard pastors say, I see you down there at Raccoon Valley. I see the church full. I see people shouting. I see people praising. You're in the honeymoon stage. You you wait until it rains, it's going to pour. What are you talking about? People are going to leave you. People are going to stab you in the back. People are going to lie about you. People are going to say they're going to be there, and they're going to say they're, sh- they're coming to help you, and then they're not going to show up. They'll disappear. They'll leave your church and go to five and never tell you a single word. I said, that ain't going to happen here. That ain't going to happen here. Isn't that, isn't that something? I, isn't that something? Uh, 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 fresh start, fresh start, fresh start. Honeymoon stage, honeymoon stage. And, and, but, but, but change is happening, church. Changes happen. Things happen. People come and go. And God showed me, Sister Kathy, that even when things happen that we don't expect, God is still good. And he is still on his throne. And I told those pastors, I said, you know, that might happen, it might not happen. But glory to God, don't get me to talk me into quitting before I get started. Amen. We should encourage one another in the Lord and say, hey, uh, we're the head and not the tail. We're going to make it. We're not going to break it. Amen. Are you willing to change? The people became weary of the rituals and cleansings and washings and laws and ordinances and sacrifices and commandments. They felt it was impossible to keep. So the book of Malachi bears this out very clearly. Malachi 1 and 13. Yet, uh, yea, said also, behold, what a weariness it is. And ye have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, says the Lord? The church was in dire need of fresh start. It had started to become ritualistic, boring, joyless routine for them. Have you ever been on your way to church and not this one and if this has been you don't say amen because I don't want my heart broken while I'm preaching all right and you're just on your way to church you're like I dread going to that place don't you say it Tony (laughs) he's laughing it should never be dreadful to go to the house of the Lord now on the flip side when I wake up before you guys do and get here and walk around these aisles and pray. You know what? I look forward to spending time with the Lord, but sometimes I dread fighting against the enemy because it gets tiring. We're fighting against the enemy that has an end game of hell and a lake of fire and the the enemy never quits and doesn't quit. I, 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 I dread trying to pray for people, Brother Reuben, that don't want deliverance in their life. We were just talking about this uh, a minute ago, uh, Jordan and I, when some people who, you know, 
the, the enemy gets down deep in your soul through wounds and scars and holes. And if you don't have your guard up, you're not prayed up, you don't have your armor on, the enemy's going to find a way in. Just like when you get in your house sometimes, you're like, there's ladybugs everywhere. How in the world did they get in? Sometimes you don't know how they got in, but all you got to do is call the exterminator and say, get these out of my house in the name of Jesus. And that's what you do when the enemy comes in and shows up in your camp. You call on that exterminator, the Holy Ghost, and say, get this nasty spirit out of my camp in the name of Jesus. But sometimes people don't want that. They're comfortable in their sin. They like to dabble in their stuff. They like to dabble in their witchcraft. They like to dabble in their gossip and their betrayal and their hurt. And for some people, they suck the life out of you before you ever make it to your chair in the house of God of all places. They suck the life right out of you. Why? Because they're not willing to change. They want somebody to come up here and say, Oh, Sister Kathy, it's going to be okay, Sister Kathy. You hold your head up. I was reading Oprah Winifrey said on Instagram that you, you can make it in this world. Bless the Lord. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, that's, not, that's what those kind of people want because they're not willing to change. Can I just be very bold and confident and step out in faith and say, if you are willing to change, you need to change sometimes those people that are in your circle because if they suck the life out of you before you even get down your butt in the seat before the countdown starts, I'm telling you, you need to look at them and say, honey, I hear you. I've heard you the last 50 million times. You've told me that story. It is time to change. Let me pray with you right now. Let's go ahead and move forward in the name of Jesus. Uh, where you at, Tony Ritchie? My legs just started going like Tony Ritchie. It must be the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. But God's saying if you want to change, sometimes you got to get some things out of the way. Woo, Jesus. The church was in dire need of a fresh start. Can I tell you that the refreshing is here, Raccoon Valley? The refreshing start is here that you ask for, all right? The, uh, Jesus told us at the beginning of the year, stand. Why in the world would you need to stand if something wasn't coming to shake you up and shake you down? The other day I drove up the Clinton Highway over here going to Clinton, right? From here, Raccoon Valley, Clinton, there was like six trees in the middle of the road. And then later on that day, a stinking airplane crashed for crying out loud. And then the same night, uh, there was a car that flipped over on its top right over here on the other side of our church. And I'm just thinking about it. I was like, plane crash there, trees there, wreck there. It's like the enemy is just trying to distract all around the premises of our property. And the Lord spoke to me and said, get used to it. This is what it's going to be. I have you. I've protected you. I'm holding up your church with my righteous right hand. But expect to see more dilemmas, delays, disasters around you. But have no fear because I'm still God. That's what I heard in my spirit. When I'm over here ministering to this lady who got ran off the, the, the road and her tire was hanging off her rim. And she, I, I, said, I said, do you live around here? She was all shaken and, you know, scared. It was at nighttime. I said, honey, I'm not a weirdo. I'm the pastor of this church. And then I laughed and said, I might still be a weirdo, but I'm the pastor of this church. She said, oh, praise God. Just right out of her mouth. Praise God. I don't know if she believed God or not. And I was trying to help her with her tire. And it's funny how God sometimes send those who are broken, some of those who are lost for us to minister to. And all we did was just show her love. I said, hey, I'll tow that car to your house if you don't want to be out here late at night. Oh, no, you don't have to do that, preacher. You don't have to do that. But thank you. Nobody's ever offered to do anything like that before. And you see, God's getting us ready for something. He's changing the way that we think as a church. He's changing the way that we lead and that we minister as a church. He's changing things in the spirit behind the scenes so that when he reveals it to you, it's going to be obvious. The reason why, Miss Marina, why I told you that story about the starving baker is because we need all of our bakers healthy and not starving because the world is hungry. That's a whole other sermon right there. We go through the same routine every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, sometimes the two and the four, and every Wednesday night, midweek. It seems like, 
I look at my staff and I'm like, all right, who's coming tonight? Who's coming tonight? And it's never consistent. Y'all know, you can laugh. It's okay. I know we got a lot of hardworking people. It's like, are we going to have 10? Are we going to have 100? Are we going to have 50? You just never know. But we get in this routine and in this same procedure in the same old way and we've always done it. We sing the same songs. We we say the same old things. We pray the same old prayers. We even sit in our same old seats. Some of you, you've sat in the same seat the entire time that I've been the pastor. Amen. The entire entire time. If, if if Jack calls and says, I left my Bible, I can tell you where it is and there's going to be a pistol in it. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But the pistol part's true. Amen. Glory to God. The pistol part is true. There's some of you, and this is no joke, there's some of you, y'all get in the same routine, I can get about the 20 minute mark and I can start seeing heads drop it like it's hot. There goes one. You're thinking, people are getting it tonight. They're falling out of the spirit. No, they're just tired. Come on. <laughs> the same routine. But listen, we found ourselves content with the old holding on to the past, content in Zion. Come on, somebody. And we feel no need for anything new. Listen to what God said. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and ye shall not know it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. First, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Too many of us are afraid of anything new. Can I get a witness? I said two of us are afraid of anything new. Two of us are afraid of anything new. Are you afraid of anything new? Does anybody want a new car? Oh, can I, I'm going to preach it like I'm on TV. I'm going to preach it like I'm on TV. And Does anybody want a new car? Does anybody want a new house? Does anybody want a new wife? Does anybody want a new dog? All you got to do is prophesy. All you got to do is speak it into existence. Come on, that's a bunch of hogwash, church. I need the Holy Ghost to be the change in my life so he can welcome in the new. That's when you hit the second button there, Stephen. Hit the second one real quick. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Come on. Thank you, keyboard player. I appreciate you. Bless the Lord. But first, the, Jesus is saying, I will do a new thing. Too many of us are afraid of anything new. New things make us feel uncomfortable and uneasy. When I first came here and I spoke that first sermon, Brother Jack, I was scared to death. I remember you looking at me with them big brown eyes. You were saying, you better preach it on, brother. I'm just kidding. I, I felt love from the first day that we stepped on the property and peace and joy and kindness. And still to this day, man, I just love you all so very much. But we don't, we don't want to get out of our comfort zone sometimes. And God's got to shake us and say, get out of that comfort zone. We don't want to offend somebody. Got one. Let me say it again. We don't want to offend somebody. We don't want to make any waves. We, so we keep holding on to our security blanket, which is nothing more or less than the former things. Same old, same old, same old. Now notice, God didn't say he was going to do a weird thing. <laughs> There's too much of that going on all over the world. All right? You ain't going to hear about the Raccoon Valley Church of God doing any grave sucking where you go and lay on the grave of those who have passed and suck the anointing out. That's a bunch of hogwash if I ever heard of it. You're not going to hear of angel feathers and pixie dust falling from the ceiling. Glory to God. No, that's weird. God said, I'm going to do a new thing, not a weird thing. There's nothing weird about holiness. It's good. It's wonderful. It's attractive. Glory to God. Now, the world will say when you start casting demon out of folk, that's weird. You know why it's weird to them? They've never changed. <laughs> Plane left the building right there, brother. I want a fresh anointing. I want this church to have a fresh experience with God. We may not need a new building. Might not be the answer. We may not need a new piece of carpet. I better get an amen on this one. Y'all might not need a new pastor. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But we need to get out of our normal. 
and our routine and our stereotype way of worship and ask God to do something new. The wording in verse 19, rivers in the desert express the influence of the Holy Spirit. Verse 37, John 7, 37 through 39. In the last day, that great day of the feast, if you'll come, Miss Marina, I'm coming to a close. This is my first close of four. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spoke of the he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. But in John chapter 4, Jesus told the woman at the well, But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in everlasting life. The word also says that I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys and I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. He turneth the wilderness into standing water and dry ground into water springs. Church, we need a fresh touch from God this evening. I don't know about you, but I want to be refreshed. I want the Holy Spirit just to water me down tonight. I want him to saturate and soak me in his goodness, in his love, in his word. Hallelujah. In his word. Do we want to go forward? Do we want to change from routine to exciting? Do we want to go from boring to exciting? Are we th- are we boring? Are, is this a boring church? I don't think we're a boring church. <laughs> oh. Let me say this, husbands and wives. Do you want to take your marriage from boring to exciting? You want to take your finances from boring to exciting? You want to take your prayer life from boring to exciting? Are you willing to change? I remember in school when my football coach said, "Are you? do you want to be the best wrestler you've ever been? I said, yes, I do. He said, well, are you willing to lose all that fat? He said, (laughs) that wasn't even that fat. He said, if you'll shed it off, you can do something. But you can only be as good as you're willing to make the change for. I never forgot that. I never forgot that. Did you know that your relationship with Jesus Christ, Pam Pam, is going to be as good and as strong as you allow it to be? If you wake up and say, the Lord's not speaking to me, are you speaking to him? Don't get mad at the Lord. If you're not speaking to him, you're getting mad at him for not speaking to you. Are you willing to change? Don't get upset. Just a little bit softer, sis. Don't get upset if you stand in a worship service I don't. I can preach this because I don't know how it was out here because I was filling in because nobody was on the drums and I couldn't hear nothing but boom 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 pow pow my ears the whole time if you're in a worship service where it's dry and nobody's shouting nobody's amening nobody's saying glory to God you're worthy of it all thank God I'm so glad I'm here I'm glad I'm saved I'm glad I'm set free I'm glad I'm not addicted I'm glad I'm free I'm glad I'm here thank God for your presence if you're not excited about the worship service are you willing to change? Because if you change, all those around you is going to change. I've never met one person, Sister Kathy, that said, Well, glory to God, I started tithing and I lost everything. I started tithing and all hell broke loose and I lost my whole family. They were all in bondage. I got four heroin addicts out of just tithing. No, nobody's ever said that. They said everything changed for the better because they made a change in their life. They started trusting and allowing God to do something that they didn't let allow and let God do before. I love Sunday night. I don't know what it is. It's so easy to preach in this atmosphere tonight. But when you begin to change and you begin to call on the Lord and you go forward, you move forward oh it's hard to change Pastor Zach it's uncomfortable to leave the old things behind, it's like an old worn out recliner, the good the thing looks good, it looks bad it sags, it's dirty but oh it's comfortable oh it looks good Pastor Zach I'm just used to sitting here at a certain time watching you know uh, 
what Andy Griffith every night right before I go to bed. And I, it's just it's broke in. It's for me. But there's times where it needs to be thrown into the dump. Purchase a new one. Throw it away. <laughs> Will it cost something? Yes, but it has served its time and purpose. Will it cost something to change? Yes, to allow God to bring forth a new thing, something fresh. It's what we need in the last days that we are living in. It's going to cost us our routine. It's going to cost us our comfort zone. We may have to give up our customary ways. You might have to quit saying, well, we've always done it this way. We've always done it that way. How many desires the Holy Spirit to operate in our church and have his way amongst his people? Who wants God to move in your church? Somebody shout amen. Amen. Holy Spirit is not dull and boring. The Holy Spirit is is not uninteresting. The Holy Spirit is fresh and inspiring, joyful and exciting. And I want to be a part of the new thing that God's getting ready to do. Would you stand all around this room? Here's what I ask. You folks that are here tonight, you want to be here. Nobody had to drag you out of the house. I didn't send one text tonight for this reason. I said, God, send me those who want to do something new. Here you are. Now, I know that's a bold statement. There's some who are in the Philippines and in the Dominican Republic. Elliot. But anyway, have fun. I'm jealous. But tonight, you're here. You have the ability to be here, and you chose to be here. I want us to go offline. God bless you. I love you if you're watching online. But 